Good morning, folks. Scott Watts here from Watts Way Farms. Thanks for joining me on this cold, blistery morning. My weather app says it's 34 degrees right now with a feels like temperature of 30 degrees. And for South Central Alabama, that's cold. Fortunately, it doesn't get that cold down here that often. And that's part of the reason why I like it down here and live down here. Now, the flip side of that, of course, is many know it gets terribly hot during the summer. But to me, I'll take it in exchange for the mostly mild winters. So today, I thought I'd talk a little bit about unrolling hay or hay usage for cattle and rings or whatnot. I mean, I typically feed right now in a hay ring and it's not because I don't want to unroll hay it's just because the the ability my ability to unroll hay is quite limited I do believe that because of the neglect this farm that we purchased has had over the last 10 or so years with no really no nutrients being given back it's been cut for hay and hay hauled off and pretty much that's it for the last 10 years so I do want to start taking a concerted effort at getting nutrients back into the soil and I do think a good way to do that is with unrolling hay and then letting the cows kind of do their thing they'll eat a lot of it they'll you know poop and pee on a lot of it and they'll turn a lot of that back into the ground and I think that's good carbon and organic material but the challenge is hay unrollers are just they're they're just not cheap I mean I've seen on the online and different videos where they make ones that hook up to your ATV and or you know and they're pretty cheap and but still I mean, they're not pretty cheap I mean they're two thousand dollars two thousand dollars is not cheap uh, I've seen the ones the fancy attachments that go to your tractor and those will set you back 12 1300 bucks but you need an extra set of real hydraulics and I have a small tractor I'll show it to you here in a minute and I just, you know, I don't have that uh, attachment that will allow me to do that. So I've tried putting hay out, unrolling it by hand, and which is very hard. I've tried pushing it with the tractor, which doesn't work very well. And so I stumbled across, I don't know, it was an old post from uh, quite a while back of somebody that kind of made a DIY one that I think I might be able to make work. So I don't know, it might work, it might not, but if it does, this is a $50 bell unroller that'll at least help get me through the rest of this winter. So we'll see, let's check it out. So here is one of my two hay rings. I have this hay ring that I use for my main herd and then another hay ring in the calf pen. You can see there's nothing fancy about it. It's a plastic hay ring and does what it's supposed to do as you see the my herd here enjoying their breakfast of bahia hay of uh, the challenges as most know they you know they're they stomp the ground and it can become quite muddy around the area where the hay is as they pull out what they want and they typically drop a lot on the ground this becomes their bedding area for the you know the three or four days that the that it's here my this herd's going through right now about one bale every three days i have the four by five uh size bales of hay that i'm feeding them and you know so not a not a great solution but uh not terrible either now what i do is before i feed them another bay I'll use the spear on my tractor and I'll pick this ring up and I will move it to another spot on the farm and at least try to spread it out some so they're not constantly um, on the same spot of land beating it up um, for bell after bell but as you can see it's already even this bale is two days, uh, one day old, and it's already quite muddy and tracked up in this little area. So not an ideal situation. So here's a spot where the hay ring just was. So the, the hay ring and this bale of hay was put out three or four days ago, and the hay ring was here and was left here until yesterday when I, or day before yesterday when I moved it up the hill 
there and put a new Bella Bella hay in it for them. But as you can see, even with the frost on the ground kind of covering it up, it is quite muddy and beat up in this area. A bit more than I think I probably would like uh, for this. I just don't think this is you know, in line with what I'm trying to accomplish here with adding carbon and organic material back to the uh, land. Now, what I will do is I'll come back with my hay fork and I'll spread this out a little bit to kind of mitigate the damage uh, to the ground here. But again, that's more work for me, which um, I don't like and not, you know, accomplishing what I hope with my trying to regenerate the the land here so okay so this is what it looks like I guess when I'm done so there was a bale of hay here hay ring was on it cows ate it over the course of three days you know made it pretty good muddy around the actual hay ring and you know deposited a lot of manure urine and whatnot on the ground here and then you know I moved the hay bale to or the next spot to another spot in the pasture and then came back with my hay fork and spread this out so I mean all in all this to me doesn't look terrible I mean it's not again not the ideal situation but I don't have any exposed mud here and the remnants of the hay I'm sure have seed and you know what not in it that it's going to help it grow back you know come spring it'd be real interesting to see how these individual hay spots do compared to everywhere else uh in the field i actually think it's going to probably do quite well but my motivation for not wanting to continue this is really the the extra work i mean it takes for me to have to come back and manually spread this hay by hand i'm trying to you know, I guess make my life easy uh, as possible as I continue to grow my herd here, grow my farm, my other um, animal enterprises I hope to be engaging in while maintaining a full-time job. Uh, I've got to you know, work smarter as the say it is. So again, this isn't terrible. I said no mud on the ground, uh, visible mud on the ground right now. It's all covered up. So we shall see. Now well, this cow is on the wrong side of the poly this morning. I haven't had this happen like this in a while. You can hear I got already got the red bucket of cubes out. And let me tell you, this herd is trained to range cubes. They get very little. I use it mainly just to, when I need them to go a specific spot that they're not, but boy, you can hear them. They see that red bucket and they know it's cube time. So let's see if I can get her back in. All right, well, that was pretty easy. I had, wish I had another set of hands out here. I would have recorded just how easy that was, but literally all I did was disconnect the fence there. Now it's still hot even when it's disconnected because I have it disconnected on both I have it connected on both ends to kind of help with the resistance somebody had told me that that kind of decreases the resistance and you know gives you more juice and I literally just walked it open that way while shaking my my bucket and that's actually her right there uh, she just walked right in behind me uh, like I said my my herd does not get a whole lot of treats. They're a, like I said, a grass-fed operation. So we do give them a few. It's mainly, you know, when the folks come to visit, um, you know, people like, like feeding the cows and mine very much will eat right out of your hand. Uh, most of them will. I mean, a, a lot of them won't. This here, um, we call her Shady Lady, the one with her head down. There's Ava Cow and Caroline. She'll eat out of your hand as well. But Shady Lady, now she's our boss cow, uh, best I can tell. 
she pretty much decides what the herd's gonna do when and where. Uh, my two back there, we call them the finnesses. Their ear tags are both PHs, so they a little bit more standoffish, not mean or violent or anything in that regard or aggressive. They just don't get super close to you. Uh, several of these cows, when we first got them back in July, August, would not come, would not get this close to you. These two are a fine example, 911 and 802, 802 Ava cow. She'll eat out of your hand now and she definitely would not do that when we first got her. All right, let's get back to work. Okay, so the calves are back in their weaning pen this morning while we vet out my bale unroller DIY on the cheap uh, project. So step one is let's go get some hay, see how it works. Okay, so here's the bale of hay and to be unrolled. And one thing that is, I don't know, always perplexed me a little bit. I'm sure it's simple, but I keep struggling with it is which way to unroll the bale of hay. You know, I've seen a few takes, but you know, the best I can tell, what I tend to do is I try to look at the, the points kind of on the hay. You can kind of see the overall spiral of this. Um, bale of hay to see which way it's going and it looks like it was you know the points are all going kind of that direction so I think to unroll it I'm gonna want to go that way we shall see okay so here is the entire setup for my cheap DIY bale unroller in essence it's a length of rope an old fence post that I drilled a couple holes in, which both of those I just had laying around the farm here. And the only thing I purchased was this. It's a, what is it, a Groundwork 17 pound San Angelo bar. I got this from Tractor Supply. I think it was $25, maybe 35, not much. I had previously tried this with a just an old piece of pipe I had laying around here on the farm and that didn't work. It bent as soon as I put pressure to it. Uh, I've already taken the net wrap off the bale of hay. So let's put this together and see if it works.
All right, so this is pretty much the entire setup. I just put the rod through the hay bale. As you see, I probably should have brought a hammer uh, to put it through. Then I just, this string of rope goes through. I did tie a couple of knots here to kind of keep it straight. I guess this is gonna kind of act like a spreader. Uh, and then just section a rope over my uh, hitch on the tractor. So we'll see uh, if it works. Okay, well the results are in um i think that worked i think it worked quite well and in all honesty it worked a bit better than i expected it to um it didn't jam up or flip up uh it just unrolled i mean i think if you needed to i mean if you didn't have a tractor uh to unroll hay with or to move the bales of hay with if you had the bales of hay delivered to your property and could flip them over on the side i think this would work you know with an atv a side by side or even your truck i mean just hook it over the hitch i mean there's nothing fancy about this setup um again it's the only expenditure i had was that pry bar uh now i could go back and maybe buy a little bit better quality rope and maybe a little bit better board here but shoot oh uh, this works and it it worked well uh i think that this may be my new method of unrolling hay now i didn't unroll this whole bale only because you know this is for my my calves my six or my cow calf paired and my four calves um and they just don't you know they're not gonna eat that much hay i know a lot of the the strategy behind unrolling hay on ground is that you know that it increases the waste but it you know adds the organic material back to the ground and the cows mix it with their poop and urine and you know and it's better for the ground but i do want to try to i guess maximize what the hay i have i have plenty i'm sure to get me through the rest of this winter but um you know try to use it as efficiently as i can so i'll unhook this and pick this bale back up and save it um and then roll it out in the next day or two but all in all um super impressed i count this one as a win so here's how to make your cheap diy uh bale unroller don't need the two thousand dollar uh hitch type ones that i've seen or the twelve hundred dollar tractor hydraulic ones i mean for less than literally less than a hundred bucks uh with material mostly with materials you probably got laying around uh, you can build a pretty efficient bail and roller so all right well that's all i've got for today i hope y'all enjoyed this video as much as i enjoyed seeing this work again this is literally the first time that i did this so we're learning together here on the farm uh, so have a good day talk to y'all soon see you